YouTube, how you doing? Murphy here bringing you another product review. Today's review is going to be on the Vermillo and Mechanical Keyboards Glintstone Manilo. Now this is essentially a Vermillo Manilo, which is a wireless hot swap 65% keyboard. But this specific keyboard here is a collaboration done between Vermillo and Mechanical Keyboards, and this is their Glintstone colorway. And we're gonna talk about the specifications and the wireless functionality and whether or not it warrants the $130 price tag. But as usual, we're gonna start off by talking about the design and the build quality. Now, as far as the design is concerned, as mentioned before, this is the Glintstone colorway which I am a huge fan of. It's really nice. It's got kind of a mixture of dark and light gray, kind of a pastel blue. Case design is really cool too. This is an all plastic bodied case, but it's really different from a lot of the other generic rectangular cases that you'll typically see. It's got kind of this stepped design and it's also two-tone which give it just a really cool aesthetic. Also on the front of the case, you've got a Vermillo badge and it does have lighting behind it, so it is illuminated. On the back, you have a center mounted USB-C port and on the bottom, you have two stage height adjustable feet, which give you a total of three different typing angles, along with a few rubber pads, which are gonna be good for keeping the keyboard in place on your desktop. You also have some LEDs here on the right side blocker. One is a caps lock indicator, and the other one I believe is to indicate when the function row is active. And this keyboard does ship with additional keycaps included, just in case you wanna switch up the space bar, the escape key, something like that. You get some different branded keycaps, so that's kind of a nice touch as well. Overall, just a very nice looking and designed keyboard. Now, as far as build quality is concerned, very solid. Again, this is an all plastic bodied case, but it has a nice little bit of heft to it. It feels like a very solid keyboard. There is no bending, flexing, or creaking out of this case at all. You are getting double shot ABS keycaps, which should be quite durable and last you for a very long time. Everything feels very well made, very high quality. Overall build quality, very good. So we've talked about the design, we've talked a little bit about the build quality. Now let's talk about the specifications. Now I'm gonna throw the specs up on the screen for you. I'm not gonna go over each and every one, but a few things I will point out here. One, this is available in three different switch types. The Gatoron G Pro 2.0 silvers, yellows, and browns. So you do get a little bit of a variety there to choose your switch type. But ultimately, if you want to swap those switches out, you can do that easily because this is a hot swap PCB and it's a five pin PCB. So it doesn't matter if you have three or five pin switches, no clipping is gonna be involved any kind of modifications, just throw them in here and you're good to go. And the other thing to point out here is obviously this is a wireless keyboard. Now you can use this in a wired connection, but it does have a 2.4 gigahertz wireless signal to the provided USB dongle as well. But you can also use this in Bluetooth mode. And that's pretty cool because if you wanna use this with like a tablet or something like that, you can do that. If you happen to not have any available USB ports on your computer, or your laptop, you can still get use out of this as well. It's really cool that they included both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless in this keyboard. Now, real quick, before I get into my final thoughts and recommendations on this keyboard, I will give you a quick typing sound test. Now, the keyboard I have here in front of me has the G Pro 2.0 silver switches. I've made no additional modifications. This is fresh out of the box, and this is equipped with what they call their type cool sound dampening. And I will give you just a quick sound test.
So as you can hear, it sounds pretty good, especially considering this is a pre-built, fresh out of the box keyboard. So what are my final thoughts and recommendations? Well, to recap, I think this keyboard has everything most people are gonna be looking for. I really like the design. The case looks good, a classic layout, but everything is very modern, very fresh. I love the color scheme. The build quality is solid, no real issues there. Both the feel and the sound from the typing experience out of this keyboard is very good. And it's got all of the specifications that you would be looking for out of a similarly priced keyboard. Is it worth $130? I think it is. And I'll tell you why, and also in doing so, maybe give you an indication of who should consider buying this keyboard. Now, the first group of people I would recommend this keyboard for is anyone looking for a nice wired gaming keyboard. If you're gonna be using this mainly in a wired connection, there are some cheaper keyboards out there that will give you a very similar experience, both in terms of typing feel, typing acoustics, design, build quality, all of that. But I don't think that this keyboard is overpriced. In fact, one of the keyboards I wanted to compare this to that's also actually sold on mechanicalkeyboards.com is the Ducky 1.3 series. Specifically to match this one, it would be the Ducky 1.3 SF. Very good gaming keyboard, great design, hotspot PCB, really good build quality, really good acoustics, also $129. Same price as this one here, at least at the moment. So really a decision between something like those two keyboards is really gonna come down to which design you prefer, which one you think looks the best, and if you ever envision yourself using the wireless functionality from this keyboard. This would actually edge out the ducky in that case, in my opinion. And there's a lot of other keyboards in this price range in the you know, $90 to $130 price range. And you could really go either way. But I think overall, if you like the design of this one and or you think you'll get any kind of use out of the wireless functionality, this would be a very solid option. And then the other group of people I would recommend this to is obviously anyone looking for a good wireless keyboard, even a gaming keyboard. Anyone who has looked for a solid wireless keyboard option knows that you either get a cheap one, like a sub $100 gaming keyboard, and it just doesn't really live up to your expectations. I've had a lot of cheaper wireless keyboards that have connectivity issues, or they just don't look great, or they just don't sound very good. The typing experience is very flat, or you go the other route and you get a very good wireless keyboard, but those are very expensive. This is probably the best wireless keyboard that I've used under $150. And I'm taking everything into account. Design, build quality, acoustics, typing experience. Um, the fact that this is an actual good performing wireless keyboard I had no connectivity issues, no latency issues, at least in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode anyways. So very solid wireless keyboard, even if you want to game on this, pretty solid performance. So I think I could, even at $130, recommend this to most people. With that being said, that wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you guys want to see other reviews and content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you can be notified of when I post new content, and YouTube, we'll catch you later.